Hi, I'm Jonathan and I'm an instructor with Bristol and Wessex. The aim of this video is to give you some practical ideas that you can start applying now about currency, ready for when we can get flying again. There are two main currency requirements. To carry passengers, you have to have made three takeoffs and three landings in the last 90 days in an aircraft of the same type or class rating. Secondly, to revalidate your single engine piston rating, SCP, using a one hour training flight, which is what most people want, you have to have flown for 12 hours in the 12 months leading up to your rating expiry. And of those 12 hours, six hours need to be as pilot in command with 12 takeoffs and 12 landings. Now most clubs impose stricter limits and these are contained in the flying order book by Bristol and Wessex's. When I first passed my PPL, my aim was to fly twice a month because that's what I could afford. When I was flying purely for pleasure, I averaged 50 to 60 hours a year. Since I've gone commercial, my hours have increased hugely. Over 800 last year, split about 50-50 between flying jets and light aeroplanes. Building up my hours, instructing and flying commercially has given me a few insights which I'd like to share in the hope that you can put them into good use now in preparation for when we can get back in the cockpit. There are three things we're going to cover. First, what does it mean to be current and safe? Second, what can we learn from other pilots SEP revalidation flights and how can you get the most from your check ride? And lastly, how to design our own personal currency plans. First, let's look at being current and staying safe. Now for most people, the minimum number of hours just wouldn't be enough to stay safe. And also with 24 months between each check ride, that's a lot of time for skills to slip. Contrast that with the commercial world where we have checks in the simulator every six months, practicing all manner of emergencies from engine fires and failures to crew incapacitizations to rapid decompressions. At 45,000 feet, the speed at which you get your oxygen mask on makes the difference between life and death. And practice is equally as important flying light aeroplanes. One of the great benefits of being an instructor is that I get to practice every manoeuvre that we teach in the PPL syllabus very regularly. I was left in no doubt of the benefit of this when I had to make a forced landing for real last year. Coincidentally, I've been practicing PFLs with a student earlier that morning, and so everything was fresh in my mind. For me, being current and safe means doing enough flying and practice to ensure we can cope effectively, not just with normal flying, but with emergencies as well. The second thing we're going to cover is what we can learn from other pilots' revalidation flights and how to get the most from yours. Now I've done quite a few revalidation flights over the last few years. Some pilots come well prepared, others less so, some people are nervous. But the first thing you need to remember is that it's a training flight and as such it's just a great opportunity to learn. Try to relax. We all want you to do well and if something doesn't go according to plan, the instructor will just be able to do some demonstrations and you can practice until you succeed. Areas where pilots are often a bit rusty are store recoveries and practice force landings. As both of these are critical safety manoeuvres that could save your life one day, it's always a concern when pilots don't react appropriately. Another common shortfall is planning, an absence of proper pre-briefings on the weather and a pilot not having checked the NOTAMs always makes me wonder how thoroughly they prepare for other flights. So come prepared for your SCP renewal. Check the weather, look through the NOTAMs, revise key manoeuvres you'd expect to do, and have a think about what you'd like to ask the instructor to practice. Examples could be, for example, side slipping, could be instrument appreciation, or whatever you haven't done for a while. This reminds me of the excellent personal currency chart developed by the famous test pilot, John Farley. The chart, as you can see, is just an example, and you can download it from the GASCO website. You can design your own chart to reflect your flying. I definitely recommend that you include stalls, 
practice force landings and crosswind landings as part of your currency practice. As Farley says, the great benefit of having the discipline of practicing regularly is that not only will your flying skills be better, you won't be wasting time and money aimlessly burning holes in the sky. If there's something on the list that you haven't practiced for a while, for example, unusual attitudes or side slipping, consider a flight with an instructor for a bit of a brush up. If you want to practice the introduction to instruments, take an instructor or safety pilot along. Another thing we can do while we're stuck on the ground is read the pilot operating handbooks for the aeroplanes we fly. These are generally freely available on the internet. We can visualise what we would do in the event of emergencies, armchair flying. And of course, we can read the checklist for our aeroplanes, paying particular attention to the emergency procedures, such as these ones for the Piper Warrior. Flying is great fun and we're all missing it. However, piloting a plane is also a huge responsibility and it's incumbent on all of us to be safe. Practice is the only way to achieve this. So let's put the time that we're grounded to good use by preparing a personal currency chart so that we're ready to return to the skies at peak performance. Now, before I go, a big thanks to my daughter Sophie for filming and producing this video. I hope to see you back at Bristol and Wessex very, very soon, and until then, stay safe.